S&P 500 or target date funds. Which kind of fund is the best to build a long-term portfolio with if you want to get to retirement faster and safer? On one side, the great selection of the 500 best companies of the American stock market, the S&P 500 index, and investors like Warren Buffett suggest as the best retirement fund, which boasts a return of over 10% per year. On the other side, a kind of retirement fund called target date fund or target date retirement fund that automatically increases the percentage of bonds and other securities and decreases equities the closer you get to retirement to make your portfolio safer and less volatile. My name is Rick, the Italian twin of Manu Ginobili, and if you're new to this channel, say hi to the community with a comment, subscribe to the channel for a lifetime of free finance videos, and now sit back and relax because after this video, you're gonna know everything you need to know about target date funds. First of all, why are we questioning the S&P 500 at all? After all, this great index of the best 500 companies in the stock market has been proving a greatest long-term return in the last 50 years. So why would we even consider polluting it with bonds or other investments that might be safer, but give less returns in the long term? The reason is that when you retire and want to live off your portfolio, you face a so-called sequence of returns returns risk. The sequence of returns risk is a risk we face because regardless of the average long-term return of our funds, the actual return that we get each year is different and can be extremely negative, putting our whole portfolio at risk. Let me give you an example. Let's say your portfolio is entirely invested in the S&P 500. Since 1930, the S&P 500 has had a long-term average return of around 10%. So you might argue that if you withdraw 8% from your portfolio every year, you're going to have a net growth of 2%, 10 minus eight. So your portfolio is potentially never going to run out of money. But if we look at the real returns of the S&P 500 every year, we notice that they went all the way from minus 40 to plus 40%. So the sequence of returns risk becomes a problem for you if you happen to retire right before a crash or a bear market. And that's why many investment advisors suggest investing more and more into bonds the closer you get to retirement. Bonds give you a lower average return, but also less volatile than equities, reducing the risk that a couple of years of bear market destroy your retirement dream and force you to get back to work at 75 years old. But Rick, adding bonds to my portfolio is gonna make it so much more complicated. You know, it was so easy when I just had the S&P 500, I was happy with it, and now I have to choose bonds and make everything complicated. Well, that's where target retirement funds come into play. You invest in a target retirement fund, which is just one fund, and as the years go by, the fund increases the percentage of bonds and inflation-projected securities without you having to do anything. Basically, target date funds or target retirement funds are designed to simplify and automate retirement investing. All you have to do is choose a target retirement fund with a target year this is the year you expect to retire. For example, let's say that you are 35 years old and you'd like to retire in 30 years at 65. You look for a target retirement fund or target date fund that is designed for retirement in 2054. Let's check, for example, the target retirement funds from Vanguard, which by the way, are all passively managed with really low expense ratios, as you can see. And we scroll down until we find one with target retirement around the year 2054. So VFFVX as a target retirement in 2055 and a cheap expense ratio of 0.08%. Let's check it out. If you click on portfolio composition, you see it's composed of four elements. The total stock market, the total international stock market, the total bond market, and the total international bond market. Right now, the percentage of bonds is less than 10%. As time passes and you get closer to 2055, the percentage of the two bond index funds increases and the percentage of the stock market components decreases. The funds continue to adjust for approximately seven years after your retirement. In this case, seven years after 2055, until their allocations match that of the target retirement income fund. The target retirement income fund is the one at the end of the Vanguard list of retirement funds. And if we click on it, we can see how the final portfolio seven years after retirement is gonna look like. You're gonna have 69.45% in bonds, 0.74% in short-term reserves, and 29.81% in stocks. Before telling you what I believe to be the best choice between the S&P 500 and a target retirement fund, I wanna show you some performance comparisons between VOO, the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard, 
and some Vanguard Retirement Funds. Let's take for example the Target Retirement Fund 2030, which is called VTHRX. Between 2011 and today, the S&P 500 returned an average of 13.05%, against 7.45% of the retirement fund. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of Target Retirement Funds compared to the S&P 500? One is that they typically also contain the international stock market next to the American market. The S&P 500 does not. While US stocks have outperformed non-US stocks since around 2009, that's not always the case. Another advantage is convenience. You don't have to lift a finger to adjust the portfolio. The fact that you increment your bonds portion with time prevents you from losing a big chunk of money if the stock market crashes right before the retirement date. But convenience comes with a price. Target date funds are typically funds of funds, meaning they are a fund that is composed of other funds managed by the same company. We've seen before that a Vanguard retirement fund includes dollar stock market, international stock market, total bond market, and total international bond market. Each one of these funds is its own expense ratio. And on top of these fees, you pay the 0.08% of the target retirement fund itself. So you're basically paying two layers of fees. Another disadvantage if you invest in a target date fund as an employee through your 401k is that you don't necessarily have cheap Vanguard funds at your disposal. Another problem, which I think is one that you should absolutely consider, is that target date funds have a small portion of safe investments with low returns even when the target date is decades away. If I am 30 years from retirement or even 20 years from retirement, I don't necessarily want to have bonds because I'm still working to generate income and I don't care if one year or two the portfolio has negative returns because I'm not withdrawing from it. For this, I'm going to show you the average historical returns of portfolios composed of stocks and bonds and I've built this in a Google file that I created and you can download for free from the link in the description below. It's a free calculator on the three fund portfolio, including a rebalance tool. But what I want you to focus on now are the historical returns of the 25 years until 2022 of a portfolio composed of stocks and bonds. Notice how big of a difference you're gonna have. With 80% stocks and 20% bonds, you would have gotten an average annual return of 8.11% with 20% in stocks and 80% in bonds, only 5.12%. And this even considering that between 2000 and 2010, we've had a lost decade with basically no growth of the stock market. Now, what are instead the pros and cons of the S&P 500? What sets the S&P 500 index apart even from the total stock market is the selection process. And that's why I consider the S&P 500 a viable alternative to target index funds and not the total stock market. For example, the total stock market index fund includes over 3,700 companies, including small and mid cap companies, making the fund a little bit more volatile. The S&P 500 instead is determined by a committee of experts at Standard Poor's. And each asset is a viable and trackable company, making it slightly less volatile than the total stock market. But by the way, this doesn't mean that the S&P 500 is necessarily better than the total stock market. It just means that for a lower volatility and therefore a safer retirement, the S&P 500 is more convenient. If you want to dive into a detailed comparison between the S&P 500 and the total stock market, you can watch this video of mine where I compare VO and VTI from Vanguard that represents the two indexes. So the bottom line is, if you're relatively young and you invest in target date funds, you are most likely going to see your performance reduced year after year, and this is gonna strongly impact the final value of your portfolio, despite achieving a more stable portfolio in retirement. If I'm a relatively young investor, let's say with at least 10, 20 years before retirement, I would prefer the S&P 500 because it's true that it's riskier in retirement, but during these years, from now to retirement, I'm gonna enjoy a better long-term return, which is gonna result in a bigger portfolio at the age of retirement. Bigger portfolio is gonna mean that the yearly withdrawal of my living expenses is gonna represent a smaller percentage of my portfolio, making it also, in an indirect way, less risky. So the S&P 500 portfolio is gonna increase my risk of damaging my portfolio in my first years of retirement if a bear market or a crash were to come right after retirement, but at the same time, it's going to increase the probability of leaving off the portfolio for a long period of time if in the first years there is no bear market. Increase the probability to have more and more money at your disposal during retirement because the portfolio is gonna grow faster 
and increase the probability to achieve your retirement goal if you're still investing because the faster growth is going to increase your portfolio faster in the next decades. Now, just to be clear, I honestly have nothing against target retirement funds. And I do believe that either with them or by yourself, getting closer to retirement, you're going to have to start including bonds into your portfolio. Just please avoid actively managed targeted funds that are gonna ask you for 1% or 2% management fees. I know that all financial advisors are gonna be mad at me now, but it's not just me that thinks this. Listen to what Warren Buffett had to say recently about this. If you go to a dentist, if you hire a plumber, in all the professions, there is value added. In the investment world, it isn't true. Would I take financial advisors as a group and pay them 1% with the idea that they would deliver results to me that were better than the S&P 500 by 1%? Because the problem isn't that the advisors are going to do so terrible. It's just that you have a, an option available that doesn't cost you anything that is going to do better than they are in aggregate. Now, what I would do, or better said, what I will do myself with my investment portfolio is to just invest in the equity market until around 10 years before retirement. After that, just in the last 10 years, I'm going to be open to the idea of starting to invest aggressively in bonds with the goal of reaching 30-50% of bonds by retirement age. And in order to decide if I want to start investing in bonds 10 years before retirement, I will see how my portfolio will be compared to my living expenses. If 10 years before retirement my living expenses are already lower than 2-3% of my portfolio, or I expect them to be lower than 2-3% at retirement, based on historical results, I would feel confident to have even a portfolio composed of 100% S&P 500. So, this is something I'm going to see based on how far I am 10 years before retirement. But before that age, I'm going to be fully invested in the equity market. Warren Buffett has recommended that retirement savers should have 90% of their savings in equity at all times, with the remaining 10% investing in bonds. Perhaps this approach is too aggressive for you, but you don't have to choose one or the other. Another good investment portfolio strategy you can use, particularly for traditional and Roth IRAs, is to keep a portion of your retirement savings in target date funds funds while managing the remaining funds on your own. This will allow you to reach the bond equity ratio that you want and that suits your individual risk tolerance. So let me know what you think about target date funds and the S&P 500. If you missed them, check out either my video on the S&P 500 and the total stock market or my video about target date funds. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Thank you so much for watching guys. I wish you a great day or evening and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.